Precision money counting is critical to many businesses. The circular motion of this machine helps ensure that every bill is counted. Machinery is helping to minimize expensive error. No. Somebody help me answer this question. So we all know Lucifer fell from heaven with a third of the angels. And we also know that there are demonic spirits everywhere tempting us and encouraging us to do evil things. There are many times in the Bible where Jesus had to cast out demons from people. But in the book of Jude and in the book of 2 Peter, it says that there are angels kept in eternal chains and gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. So my question is, if those angels are in gloomy darkness, what are these demons and unclean spirits from? Because we know that Satan isn't locked up yet, because he roams to and fro on the earth according to the Bible. So is there a separate group of angels that are in prison, but some of them aren't? Or are the demons that we see and hear about just the evil spirits from the Nephilim slash giants from long ago? This is a legit question and I don't know, I actually want you guys to tell me. So we need to unite and spread love among us to one another, you see? Credo has had precise visions of how, when and where World War III will begin and spread. I am shown that in the very near future, Islam will rise like a lion throughout the world, and that a new war will break out in the Middle East, even bloodier than the war that was fought against Saddam Hussein. A great Middle Eastern nation, I think it is Iran, will go on out to acquire atomic power. Iran will buy terrible substances from China, substances by which you can create atomic power stations, substances by which also you can create atomic bombs and other hideous weapons of the sky. I see that there is a ship in the ocean. It is an old and ugly vessel which should have been sunk or scrapped long ago. And it is taking some radioactive substance to Iran. One of the containers will overheat. And the ship will sink in the Indian Ocean. At first, the world will not be told about the sinking of this ship. Millions of fish start drifting, dead and lifeless, towards the beaches of India, of East Africa, and Arabia. And the first inkling of this disaster that humanity will have will be when starving people in India and other countries nearby, they will eat this fish and they too will die. Wow. Oh my God. Good people of us. That is. <laughs> That's right, King Selassie. Okay, you're getting there. Okay. <laughs> You are getting there. Now let's move forward so you understand how that works. Okay? So you understand how that works. This is King Selassie. Do you remember the picture I showed you? The fro? Let me bring it back to the Medici. Let me bring Medici back. You looking at this picture real good now. And look at this. Do you see where this is going? <laughs> okay, this is, is another, this is his bloodline, his lineage. Now pay attention. His name is what? Selassie. You know what cousin is? Medici. You know what other cousin? Orsini. <laughs> let me, let me keep on moving. Let me keep on moving. We ain't stopping because y'all need to get this because it's very important. Now understand, they love to say, oh, the whitey is 
in charge. Oh, look at this and look at that. But every time you hear the YT, people need to understand. YT mean the corporations of today. Remember, what you call United States, it's a corporation that we are indigenous people agree to discharge the debt of these indentured servants that actually get the green light from Morocco. Morocco was the first to agree to say, okay, these whitey people can stay in America and we're not going to ask them to pay the debt back. We can discharge the debt. So Morocco was the first to agree to discharge the debt for these indentured servants. And that's a fact. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm show you more. Wait a minute now, because I have to show you, because they love saying, oh, the white team is in charge. Now, understand, Morocco agreed for these indentured servants to govern themselves into a foreign land, which is our land that we as indigenous people agree. That's why every single state have indigenous name. They couldn't change it to English name because that's our land, then they don't have jurisdictions over that. But since we agree for them to govern themselves, then they create a constitution so they can govern themselves here. Oh, my friends, what oh, this is for entertainment Have any purposes. of you come across this video of this falling from the sky? Now, I don't know what it is, but I have an idea. Some people are saying it's a UFO. Some people are saying it's a water spout even. Now I have my own opinion of what that is, but let me show you a little longer version of that video. Now while this is weird, I think there's a chance, and it's just my opinion, that this is some kind of balloon that just fell down from the sky. Now like I said, this is just my opinion, but to make my point, I slowed that video down a bit. Now see how this thing is coming down? There's definitely something on the bottom that has mass to it. Whether it's some kind of payload, some kind of cargo, it's something. Now the flash that happened right before it came down, I don't know what that is. But this looks like a real possibility it was some kind of balloon. Definitely not a water spout, in my opinion. And also, not something alien, although it could be a UFO since it was an unidentified flying object before it crashed. Tell me what you think that thing could possibly be. Let me know in the comment section, Booskies. Shabadu! Ha! Ah, how could that have been? When you didn't realize mom was in the room and caught you red handed. Oh, this one was there playing, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, just eating the shoes as they normally do. When they were hit by the realization that, wah, my friend, it's like I'm doing this at the wrong time. Today, uh, it's like I can be seen. I mean, I didn't realize this good vibes human was here. Oh my god, crazy. In 1883 to 1900s, the lost generation. What generation are you from? In 1901 to 1927, the greatest generation. The silent generation is from 1928 to 1945. The 1996 to 209 are the Gen Z's. And from there up to now, millennials. Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. TikTok, I need to ask y'all a question real quick on some real serious shit. Like, maybe like two or three weeks ago, have anyone felt like a weird ass difference? Like they came out the house, it was a normal ass day, and you just felt weird as shit? Now, see, look, the thing is, right, I'm on some, bro. I came outside one day, hit the sun and everything, I was feeling cool. Five minutes later, I started feeling weird as shit, bro. Like my head was feeling weird, everything was just feeling weird, bro. So the thing that really worried me, right? So I hit my friend, I'm like, yo, bro. It's like, yo, bro, like, I don't know what it was, bro, but I just came outside, I was feeling weird as shit, right? He was like, yo, bro, I was just feeling weird as shit too. So I'm like, nah, cousin, there's something going on, bro. And I know y'all know there's something going on, bro. A lot of people don't like to discuss how they feeling shit, right? But I'm on some, bro. It's some major weird shit going on, either with the sun either with these, you know what I'm saying, the shit that's around us or something like that, it's off. I know y'all been seeing people talk about the ocean. I know y'all been seeing people talk about the sun. I'm telling y'all now, whatever's coming next is going to be critical, bro. Wake up! Oh, my friends, 
Have you been feeling weird? Leave the comments. How is it that every time I try to do something great, every time I try to do something grand, every time I try to do something major, if I start writing a book or if I start building a business, if I start doing anything, how is it that I seem to go under attack? I'm going to give you a little bit of revelation and this will change the way that you do life. Of course, we all know that it may mean that you're in need of deliverance. But get this, it can also mean that you're dealing with a monitoring spirit. Simply put, a monitoring spirit is an unclean spirit that is assigned to monitor your activity. And believe it or not, monitoring spirits typically use two means by which they monitor your activity. One is eyes. In this, the unclean spirit seeks to monitor you through sight. In other words, you're being watched. Could it be an invisible force coming into your household, following you around? Potentially. But unclean spirits like to have bodies because it's easy to bind them when they're outside of a body. Because it's illegal to walk the earth without a body. This is why to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This is also why if you see somebody claiming to be your grandmother, your grandmother has went on to be with the Lord. That ain't grandma. That is a familiar spirit. There are angels that are just covered in eyes according to the book of Revelation. Keep in mind a demon is nothing but a fallen angel. Every angel has an assignment just like every demonic spirit has an assignment. And then it can monitor you through people. This is when you have people that are close enough to you where they can monitor your activity. And typically people who are being used by the enemy in your life will many times suffer through jealousy. The second way an unclean spirit can monitor you is through eavesdropping. For example, when you're going out telling everybody what it is that you're planning to do, whenever you start telling your friends that maybe you're writing a book and then all of a sudden you start going through warfare, this is because you weren't just talking to your friend. You may be telling a demon that's inside of your friend or a demon that's on the inside of you, or you could be telling an unclean spirit that is within your proximity what you are working on. This is why you should announce everything. I'm an author of over 60 books. I own a publishing company. I own a selling logo company. I've done quite a bit. I even recorded a movie. I've done quite a bit in this event called life. And I don't announce what I'm doing until I'm either done or I'm at the finish line. This is because I noticed a difference over time that whenever I told somebody, whenever I told people, hey, I'm working on a book, I'm working on that, I would a lot of times start going through a bunch of unnecessary warfare. But whenever I was quiet, I didn't deal with that warfare. And I found the same to be true with my friends who are very productive. They're typically pretty quiet about what they're working on. That is until they get to a particular space in that project. Sometimes they may tell me in advance and ask me to cover them in prayer. Other times they may announce to me, for example, hey, I'm about to launch this particular business. Either way, they've learned the science behind productivity. That means don't get so excited that you tell hell what God is doing in your life. And somebody would come on here and say, well, the devil can't stop what the Lord is doing. You're right about that. The devil can't stop him. But you can. You can quench the Holy Spirit. You can stop a move of God. The enemy knows this. This is why he'll try to get you to hinder yourself. He'll do this by frustrating you, complicating things, causing people to fall away from you. He'll use every opportunity and every open door to cause delay to come into your life. And if at all possible, he'll try to get you to stop a move of God in your life. After all, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Sometimes the devil will use your own tongue to get you to curse what God is trying to do in your life. How so, you ask? You get on the phone with that cantankerous his negative cousin of yours and that cousin's always speaking negative and you try to beat her to the punch and you start saying girl you know i'm working on this but you know how that be but you know what happens in our family girl every time we try to accomplish this this happened then you proceed to speak something negative negative. and while your cousin is cackling you sit there and continue to curse yourself just so you can entertain her Three years later, you wonder why you never finished a book. Tell my girl, I was writing that book pretty good. I got to like chapter five. I don't know what happened. You happened. Let me give you an example of a monetary spirit. I've shared this story before, but it's the one that comes to mind. The year was the end of 2013 or the beginning of 2014, but I was freshly starting to go through a divorce. My ex had just moved out of the house. So because it was still new, I was still wearing my wedding ring. Now, a little bit of a backstory. He had a relative of his that hated my guts and I knew the woman was into witchcraft. Of course, he didn't want to believe it. He was in denial or he tried to get me not to believe it. But I kept telling him, your relative is a witch. She's not just into witchcraft. She is a full-blown witch. About a year before we broke up, I had taken my ring off one time and I threw it. I know I was having a tantrum, still young or what have you, but I took my ring off and I threw it. And it was because he was about to travel to go and see that particular relative. That's because that lady was an incredible troublemaker. Plus his mistress would be at her house all the time. But that's another story for another moment. Anywho, we were living in Florida. She was living in Georgia. And I remember when he left, I couldn't find my ring. So I reached out to him. I was like, where's my ring? He said, you took it off and threw it. So why are you worried about it? I knew that he had taken it with him on that trip with her but he never would admit to it. He was gone for about a week and I couldn't find the ring. I knew where I had threw it and I saw it when it fell, so I knew he had picked it up. When he came back, he gave me the ring back. Of course, I had my little suspicions around it, but I put the ring back on my finger like a dummy. 
fast forward to when we had broken up and he had moved out of the house. So I took the ring off and I remember I had a box that had a bunch of perfume samples in it. So I went and I put the ring in that box. After that, I prayed and I went to bed. The next day, I found myself in this space where I was starting to wake up, but I wasn't fully awake yet. And I heard a conversation going on. It was almost as if I was on the phone. I remember hearing my ex's voice and then I heard that particular relative's voice. I don't remember what he said, but I heard her say, where's the ring? When I tell you, I sat up on my bed faster than the speed of light. And I remember it took me a moment. It took me a minute for me to realize that I was at home alone. And once I realized it, I jumped up out of my bed. I threw some clothes on. I went in that box. I got that ring. I had a lake in front of my apartment. I went down the stairs and I threw that ring in the lake. I'm talking about I put my back into that throw. I wanted to make sure that that ring could never be retrieved. Some of you right now, you're holding on to stuff that somebody gave you. And you wonder why that person still has a hold on you. Why that person seems to still know what's going on in your life. Hear me, witches like to use material things as points of contact. This is why I believe in taking my house through deliverance, taking my car through deliverance, taking everything that pertains to me, including my finances through deliverance. But sometimes we unintentionally get placed to the enemy and we don't realize that he's still there until he starts acting like the enemy. I pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for making my enemies my footstool. I thank you that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, thou shalt condemn. I thank you that Satan is under my feet in a place of defeat. I have the victory through your son, Christ Jesus. I ask that you send your warring angels to arrest every unclean spirit, every monetary spirit that may be in operation in my life. I blind, deafen, and weaken every unclean spirit that is in operation in my life. I take authority over every unclean spirit that is in operation in my life. I command those spirits to go to the abyss right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that they will not come back to the earth, but they must remain in the abyss until they're cast into the lake of fire by the Most High God. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I command that the enemy loose everything that he's stolen from me and my bloodline. I destroy every demonic system that is in operation in my life. I close every demonic access door, every demonic portal that's been opened in my life. And I cancel every word curse that's been spoken against me. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you believe that you're free, write I'm free in the comments. Uh, Jesus can free us of all spirits. You see? Good vibes to you, my friends. Good vibes human here from other places of the world has a mango and a funny way to beat it using their glass. Another good vibes human decided to try out that trick we have just seen. Myself, this is new stuff to me. But the type of cups you have from this side of the world, I doubt they can do this. You see, we use metallic cups. Now, my friend, do you think our cup can cut the whole mango if we try this? Or even cut yourself, you see? But anyway, it's good vibes. If you have glasses at your home, have you ever tried this and how did it turn up? Did you know of this trick? Have you been knowing of it all along? You see, we also eat the mangoes with the peelings. In other places, good vibes guy here has a... Uh, what? Is this a baby siren? Or uh, mermaid, or just another fish with a uh, big head and uh, crazy fins. You leave your comments, my friends. First friend. step in understanding this instruction manual is to know that your physical mind doesn't really know what it thinks it does. Let go. When you surrender, you're not giving up control. You are surrendering to the control you already have. Wow. Conquer yourself to conquer the world. Watch this. She won at life because when the squirrel knocked on her door and paid her a visit to show her something special, she didn't know what she was going to see, but she was also excited. Now, before I continue, let me know in the comments, what do y'all think that the squirrel is going to show this lady? And also, don't forget to follow me. But as the squirrel led her to its favorite tree, he wanted her to climb up that ladder because this squirrel was so excited to show her something new. Now, as she climbed up the ladder with anticipation, and as the squirrel climbed up the ladder with anticipation, the squirrel was so excited to show this lady his newness, okay? And there is a lesson in this for all of us. 
just like this squirrel is excited to show her his new nest, we have friends out there that are so excited to show us their new houses, their new cars, their new babies, their new opportunities, their new everything. And instead of being happy for them, what do we do? We fake a smile, but in our hearts there's jealousy. And if you have ever been a victim of jealousy, I want you to write jealousy in all caps in the comment section. There are so many people that when you tell them good news, they become jealous of you. Because they started at the same level with you, but they don't have what you have. That's one reason. Another reason is that they secretly hate you. Another reason is that they envious of you. Another reason is that they just really don't like you, but they faking it until they make it, right? And they don't want to see you win. But look how this lady was so ex 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 excited for this squirrel. We should be excited the same way. That's why you hear many Muslims saying what? Mashallah. Mashallah, what does mashallah mean? It means God protect that thing that you have that might make people jealous, right? You might have a beautiful baby. Say mashallah. Your friend might have a new house. Say mashallah. Your friend might have a new car. Say mashallah. Your friend might have just went on a vacation. Say mashallah. All of the things that can make you jealous, when you say mashallah, this is a this is a dua, a supplication, asking God to protect that thing that might make people jealous. Even if it's your own self. Because human beings are human beings, right? Sometimes we get jealous and we don't know why, right? It's a human emotion to be jealous. I'm not talking about the good jealousy, like the jealousy that a man has over his woman. I'm talking about the bad jealousy where it's like, damn, why you got this? I don't want you to have this. So if you, if your friend is showing you something, say mashallah when your friend shows you something. You don't have to be Muslim to say this. Say mashallah when your friend shows you something. Be happy for your friends. And if you are a person that's showing off the new things that you have, Listen to me. Be considerate of the other people's situations. Are you flexing your new house to your friend that doesn't have a house? Are you flexing your new car to your friend that's still riding the bus? Are you flexing your new baby to your friends that are infertile? Be considerate also. Be considerate. If you have friends that are just so far behind and you're trying to flex, be careful because you might be attracting the evil eye to yourself. But regardless, let's learn from this lady and the squirrel and let's be happy for our friends when they get nice things. And let's say mashallah when our friends show us nice things. And also, if you made it to this point in the video, I salute you. Let me see some acorn emojis in the comment section because y'all are the real heroes and legends. I love y'all. Mashallah, my friend. Smart, attractive, sentimental. Ah, which one is yours, my friends? How are your fingers arranged? Smart, attractive, sentimental. Let me check mine first. Ah, oh my God. Where am I? See, because there is none there for so me. So I got me a new man. You like him? So, you don't like him? I need to run. Well, how long is I think he's a nice him. guy? He need to be running from you. You don't think he's a nice guy? He's nice to you. What you? Are you allergic to the bullshit? You allergic to the bullshit? Okay, but he took your spot in the bed one time. Let it go. Let it go. You gonna cross your paws on me? Oh. Okay. 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 Welcome back to the Lugawa series, y'all boys. Um, I did a video on this creator before. I'm a tagger in the in the um, in the video but another day another lugao look at him look at his stance he's clearly fed up with you you over here trying to bring another man when he's the man of the household what you like like what you doing that's his house that's his house it's not yours it's his 
He talking about something, well, you, you about to go doing all this cheating on me, and I'm right here. What's my attention? Now, beyond all this Lugau's jealousy and all that stuff, I think you should listen to him. This not this don't look like a Lugau that's out to get you. He look like he really concerned about, you know, your well being. If he telling you that man not the one, then maybe that man not the one, man. He probably don't know him like that for real, for real, but I think he know enough. He ain't tell you nah nah. He told you to run. Run. Can you imagine? And imagine being the dude. <laughs> imagine being the dude. You can't talk to me because your dog said run. Man, that dog don't know me like that, man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, y'all be easy with these blue guys, man. This was recorded in Malaysia, May 21st of this year, my friends. And when you take a closer look at the crowds, ha! My God, there is crazy stuff here every day. Look, do you think those are the stars doing that, my friends? So a couple days ago, I just saw my aura basically for the first time. And I did it by using this technique that I read in this book. And it's really simple. So basically what you do, what I did was I held my hands just like this and basically held them about two feet, maybe a foot and a half in front of my face. And the room was darker. I had the background of my hands uh, as like a dark kind of dark wall basically. And after about 10 minutes of focusing, 10 to 20 minutes of focusing on the space in between my fingers, um, I was able to see a blue field, which basically I was able to move eventually, kind of like tappy. It, it seemed like it was coming off my fingers and touching each other, but yeah, you should try this. Good people, but say no to drugs, spread love and be honest. You see, good vibes. Pigeons pretending to be a chicken. But this one is a little bit uh, confused about their nature. Maybe it's because of staying for quite some time with their chicken friends Fairies there. Is it? mermaid considered extraterrestrial beings? No. Fairies are another way of describing the idea of the elementals that are projections or expressions in physicalized form of the consensus reality that creates different kinds of individual symbols or beings that are connected to nature, the actual consciousness of the planet itself. The idea of mermaids is more the idea of transformation and genetic alteration that occurred in the past, primarily in Atlantean times, that created certain kinds of beings, some of which survived uh, to some degree into something close to your present history, but don't really exist exactly in the same way. Now, don't get this confused with the fact that certain elementals can present themselves in mermaid form, but that doesn't mean that they're the original genetic mermaids that were created in Atlantean times. Hey, I never eat watermelon the same, having seen this from this guy. Uh -huh, you grab some lemon there, you are watermelon, aha, uh -huh, my friend. Come look at this, it's like we have something we retrieve with the watermelons there in the farm. Aha, uh -huh, you cut the watermelon, uh, what next, what next, wait, wait, wait. I hope they eat also the peelings, no need for throwing stuff away. Aha, uh -huh, let's see. The watermelon is not seen, but Wait, my friend is telling me, English people, your watermelon does it have seeds? Please leave comments. If it doesn't, it's very suspicious. Ah, brother man puts some lemon on the watermelon and uh, looks like it tastes uh, extremely delicious. Ha ah, ha! Keep me back to speed. In the next video or coming videos, we will try this out, my friends, and leave out the results for you. You see? Oh, yeah. But you see, you, for you to even feel nicer, try the watermelon with the peelings. You see? It's like some toppings and it's good vibes.
And now, one of us, my friends, good people of art. I'm really, really good that you have watched up to this part. You see, that action is never taken for granted. Even uh, let's organize a round of applause for you because of that. My friends, let's clap for this one. Uh, you guys have been doing great in the comment section, hitting the like button. You are really loved. May God always reward you in incredible ways and come through for you in all your situations in this life. Till next time, peace and love be with you. I've been Y31H. They love you all. Bye.